In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use the Liquid Layout Tool as well as the Alternate Layout Tool in Adobe InDesign 2015. So I already went ahead and opened this flyer I had previously created. And let's say I wanted to go and adjust the size. How would I do it? A lot of you would probably come up here to File and Document Setup, and you can adjust the page size here. You could also come right over here to the Page Tool or click Shift P to select it. With the page tool you can see some of the same options. We can adjust our page size here or you can manually adjust it. And you can see if I do choose to manually adjust it, it's going to change size based off of the reference point. So for example right now the center is selected so it's going to move inwards towards that reference point. Also when you have the page tool selected you'll see these little handles appear. You can use these handle, handles to manually adjust the page size. But you can see here when I change my page size, nothing really happens to the images on it. Also, when I release, it snaps back. So if I wanted to retain that page size while I'm dragging it, you just hold Command and Alt and then release. And that's how you'll be able to adjust that page size. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that. And I really didn't like how that image was just kind of staying in place. So I'm going to use my liquid layout tool. I have all of these options right up here, as long as the page tool is still selected. Another option is to go to Window, and then Interactive, and then you'll see Liquid Layout. If you click on this, you have that same liquid page rule. And essentially, what the Liquid Layout tool is, is a series of rules that you can set on a page to make adjustments to it. Some of you may have worked with Layout Adjustment before, but with Liquid Layout, there's really no reason to. Liquid Layout is the more modern sort of replacement to it. If you ever did want to go back to the Layout Adjustment tool, you'll find it right up here in the little drop-down, and you'll find your Layout Adjustment. Again, this is a little bit of an outdated feature though. With the liquid layout, you really won't have any use for it. But just in case, it's there. Alright, so let's go through some of these liquid layout page rules really quick. So right now it's set to controlled by master. So pretty much anything, you can see the A master is applied to it. So it's taking any rules that may have been applied to the A master. So if I do go ahead and adjust this page, Again, I'm holding Command and Alt, releasing. You can see that new page size also adjusted on the master. I'm going to go ahead and undo that. Another option we have here is Scale. So Scale is a pretty easy one to master. What it does is it scales everything on the page. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Scale, choosing my page, and you can see now when I shrink down this page, everything on it is scaling. It's shrinking down along with the shrunk page size. So I don't really want to go with that, so I'm going to go ahead and release, and my page will snap back in place. So then we have our recenter option. With a recenter option, it doesn't really do too much for it. It basically just changes the position, but it's everything is still going to stay the same distance apart. And then I'm going to choose... I'll come back to object based because this one's just a little bit more complex. We'll go ahead with guide based. So with guide based you guys are pretty familiar with working with rulers and dragging out guides. But now with our liquid layouts and our liquid page rule applied we're dragging out liquid guides. So you'll see the difference in one second. Alright, so you can see I just dragged out that guide, but this is a liquid guide. You can see the dashed line. So you can see it's straight up and down. This is a vertical liquid guide, right? So now when I drag to adjust my page, items hitting that line are going to be resized horizontally. Okay, just like if I were to bring out a horizontal liquid guide, so you can see it moving towards that line, right? Shrinking in horizontally 
because there's a vertical guide there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and release so it snaps back. So now we're going to work with the object-based liquid page rule. Now with object-based selected, you can see when I click on these different items on the page, we get these little handles. So this shape here with the text in it, I had already grouped, so it's thinking of it as a single object. So these circles on the inside, those tell me the object's width. So right now they're solid, that means it's locked. So this width of the shape is not going to be adjusted. If I click on it, however, it's unlocked. This length can adjust horizontally. I like the size that it is though, so I think I want to keep it as that. So I am going to keep these locked. These ones on the outside though, those set the distance to the edges of the page. So if I wanted to adjust the size of this, let's say I always wanted it to be this close to the page. I'm going to click on this. So now it's going to maintain that proximity to the page edge. And let's say I also wanted to keep it a similar distance to the bottom of the page. Just to show you guys that really quick, you can see now it's maintaining that distance. Alright, so down here I have some information and this is something that I'm definitely going to want to play around with to make sure that it makes adjustments the way I need it to. So this bar at the bottom, for example, I don't want the width locked because if I want to stretch this page out really wide, I'm going to want the box to adjust with it. So you can see I just clicked on it, it's hollow now. That means it's no longer locked. So when I adjust the page width, you can see it stretches along with it. I like where it's positioned too. I want to make sure it always stays at the bottom of my page. So I'm also going to go ahead and select these outer circles to make sure it stays pinned to the outer edges near the bottom of the page. And then for the text box inside it, I also want to keep it left aligned, close proximity to the bottom so it stays on that blue bar. Just to see how that looks. That looks good. And I'm going to do the same with the logo over here. So you can see now as wide as I make it, that footer bar there is going to still look pretty good. So really quick I want to show you guys how to do alternate layouts. So let's say we wanted to take this flyer and quickly make it a half page to add. Rather than create a new document or a new page, we can create something called an alternate layout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this page and right click and choose create alternate layout. When I select this, it gives you the option to change the name. So I'm going to call this half page. From source page, I want it to be from letter. So that's good as is. And I'm going to go ahead and adjust this. It would probably be about 8.5 by 5.5. So with the liquid page rule options, I'm going to go ahead and keep it on preserve existing because I wanted to keep that series of rules that I had just created on this page. If I wanted to change it though, you have a few other options. You can set it to scale, kind of like we went over previously, the recenter, guide based, you have those options. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And you can see over here it just created that half page flyer for me. So that's pretty much the gist of working with alternate layouts and liquid layouts in Adobe InDesign 2015. Of course, the best thing you can do to really master these skills is to practice, practice, practice. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot an email to garrityGraphics at gmail.com.